Leadership is an intangible. No weapon, no impersonal piece of machinery ever designed can take its place. Perhaps no other individual in the history of the United States Army exemplifies the ideal of a soldier more than General Omar Nelson Bradley. From humble beginnings to serving as the Army's last five-star general, Bradley led our forces throughout World War II from the D-Day invasion, through the Battle of the Bulge, and finally to the surrender of the Nazis and the end of the reign of the Third Reich. Omar Nelson Bradley was born February 12, 1893, in a log house outside Clark, Missouri. A family of little means, John Bradley was a school teacher by trade, and young Omar and his father walked to school each day. Like his father, Bradley became a crack shot with a rifle, and he acquired his father's love of baseball in the great outdoors. Omar was only 14 when his father died. Shortly after graduation, his Sunday school teacher recommended he apply for a slot to the U.S. Military Academy. He was appointed as an alternate of the 2nd Congressional District of Missouri. As a new lieutenant, Bradley saw service along the Mexican border, but missed out on serving in World War I. He spent the interwar years as a student or as a teacher. As an instructor at Fort Benning, he caught the attention of Lieutenant Colonel George C. Marshall. As one of the Marshall men, Bradley's career was soon to take a different direction. Pearl Harbor is attacked, and America enters the war. In 1943, Bradley was ordered to report to French North Africa. For the first time in 32 years, Bradley was square in the midst of war. It had a really a narrow escape in North Africa the first day of combat. I ran over a mine which failed to explode. I immediately thank God for that because there's no reason why it shouldn't have gone off. At the same time, felt that I must be destined to play an important part in the war. It's interesting that that occurred to me at that time when I was saved by a miracle, and I don't know any other, no any other way to explain it. Later, Bradley took 2nd Corps into Sicily under General Patton's command. It was here he met war correspondent Ernie Pyle, who anointed him the Soldier's General. It was a title which rightly followed him throughout his life. But Bradley was just starting, and soon, a date with destiny, the most significant day in the 20th century. General Marshall sent word to General Eisenhower, my choice has been Bradley. It was Bradley who would command a million-man army in Operation Overlord, the invasion of Normandy, D-Day. On the 4th, the afternoon of the 4th, an attack on the 5th. And drawing up the plans, we'd draw them up so that we could attack either on the 5th, 6th, or 7th. The date was determined by the, the tides. It's a 19-foot tide on the, the two beaches, Omaha and Utah beaches. And uh, the distance from low water mark to high water mark is something like 400 yards. The idea would have been to, uh, under normal conditions, to land at high tide, so you put the troops ashore just at dawn. So I think the decision to go on the 6th was one of the most important decisions ever made. Because if we had put it off two weeks, the weather was even worse on the 20th. And uh, we couldn't have gone then. We had to postpone at least a month. From D-Day, the Allies pushed their way across Europe. Here, Bradley inspects a battle in person, in an ordinary jeep a soldier's general on the front lines with his soldiers. The Big Breakup, the Battle of St. Lo, Operation Cobra, cracked the back of the Nazi army. Bradley then assumed command of the newly formed 12th Army Group. Successful campaigns decimated the Nazi forces and drove them back across the Seine. With winter, a sudden counterattack into the Ardennes Forest, the Battle of the Bulge, unpredictable the enemy's last chance, but all was lost for the Third Reich. Across the Rhine and then an end to war and suffering. On May 8, 1945, the Allied command accepted the unconditional surrender of the Nazi forces, bringing an end to the hostilities, but not the horror of war. The war-torn continent of Europe was exposed to one final assault on humanity.
Created in 1944 near the town of Gotha, Ordruff Concentration Camp supplied forced labor for railway construction to a proposed communication center. It was the first Nazi concentration camp to be liberated. General Bradley served as a witness to the atrocities in this camp. As I understand it, when the Germans heard we were coming to toward this camp in our battle ford, they tried to dig up some 3,200 bodies which were buried alongside this pit and dispose of them by burn burning. They did a poor job of it. Our advance was so rapid they could not complete the job. And this shows an incomplete job of trying to burn some of the bodies that have been buried here since the 1st of January. From Ordruf to Buchenwald, Dachau, Auschwitz, Sobidor, and Treblinka, one camp to the next, each more horrifying, showing how the world would have looked had the Normandy invasion failed. The beginning of the end of World War II started on the beach at Normandy. Bradley commanded the troops storming the beachfront to retake the European continent from the aggression of the Nazi party. When it was over, Chief of Staff George C. Marshall saluted Bradley with this statement, all our confidence in you has been justified. Omar Nelson Bradley from a small town in Missouri to becoming the Army's last five-star general, a soldier's general, a common man with an uncommon destiny, a general fit for any command. <laughs>